eggplant. Hi everyone, welcome back to our training series. This video covers the use of Optical Character Recognition, or OCR, in your eggplant functional automation. OCR is an interpretive algorithm. It looks at all of the pixels in the search area, trying to figure out if the arrangement of pixels there looks like any known characters. OCR uses dictionaries to help it interpret the shape of pixel arrangements. OCR works very hard to interpret the text in your application under test. Consider this magnified text. Note how the characters bleed together. In addition, only a few pixels differentiate U and O and T and O. Generally speaking, text that's easier for a human to read is easier for OCR to read as well. Instructing Eggplant Functional to use an OCR search is very simple. Add the text property to the search in order to search for the string automation instead of searching for a captured image by that name. In addition to being able to search for a text string with OCR, you can also use OCR to read text off of the screen of your SUT using the read text function. Keep in mind that OCR searches are distinct from search type text. Search type text is a special heuristic for image searches of text elements and is unrelated to OCR searches. So far, OCR probably seems like a great option when searching for text elements. However, you'll want to carefully consider when and when not to work with OCR. Sometimes it's simply not possible to use an image when interacting with or validating a particular text element. In some cases, the inputs into your test might be highly dynamic. For example, you might need to enter a new set of patient data into your system every day and validate that each patient is displayed correctly after you submit the new patient form. Capturing an image for each piece of patient data simply won't be possible. So using an OCR search to validate the display of the data is necessary. Other times, you might need to read data, such as a dynamically generated confirmation number, off of the UI of your application. In other situations, you'll find that you have the option to either use OCR or an image search to interact with or validate a particular text element. So how do you decide which to use? Image maintenance can end up being quite high in situations where you're automating across multiple mobile devices or browsers or operating systems or when your application under test experiences frequent UI updates. Generally, OCR searches require less maintenance than image searches. This is because OCR does not consider factors such as typeface, font size, color, etc., while image searches necessarily enforce these characteristics. If there's an update to your UI that changes all the text in your test application from 12-point font to 14-point font, an OCR search will most likely go unaffected, while an image search will certainly fail. Now that you know when it's appropriate to use OCR, let's talk about how to use OCR. When searching for or reading text with OCR, you'll want to start out with the most basic command first, where you simply specify the string you're searching for, or specify the rectangle you're reading from, as in these two examples. The majority of the time, these basic implementations of OCR will work to find the desired string or interpret the string as expected. Sometimes there will be text elements on your UI that are particularly tricky for OCR to interpret. There are a number of OCR properties you can use to refine OCR and help it interpret correctly. I'll discuss the use of these later in this video as I go through some examples of refining OCR. Knowing when to use OCR properties partially comes down to knowing what the properties do, but trial and error also plays a role. The read text function and the save image file property are two tools you can use to help decide which OCR properties are relevant when working with a particular text element. When refining an OCR search, you can use read text to get an idea of what OCR is seeing to help you decide what OCR properties are needed. Save image file is an OCR property that allows you to understand how the contrast properties are interacting with your text element so that you can further refine those contrast properties in your code. I'll discuss the use of these diagnostics in context later in this video. Here's a basic example of using OCR to find a string. Even though the string Today's Deals is rendered quite differently across the iPhone and the Samsung phone, I can use this one line of code to interact with the text element on both devices. 
Recall that the default dictionary that OCR uses is the English dictionary, so if you need to perform OCR searches or reads in a different language, use the language property to specify the language of interest. Also note that you can combine multiple languages in a list if you need OCR to interpret mixed language strings. In this example, I'm searching for the welcome string on my set. As recommended, I've first tried the most basic OCR search possible. However, it seems that OCR is having trouble finding the welcome. To get a better handle on what might be going wrong with this OCR search, I can use read text as a diagnostic debugging tool. A very quick way to gather rectangle coordinates from the SUT for use in debugging is to move the capture area to encompass the rectangle of interest, perform a copy action on the keyboard, and then paste the coordinates into the ad hoc do box at the bottom of the run window. This allows me to very quickly run a read text command without interfering with my script. The read text return shows that OCR is able to correctly interpret most of the characters in the welcome, so I'm confident I'll be able to refine this search and make it work correctly. The problematic character in this string is the italicized L. To OCR, it looks like a forward slash, which is an understandable misinterpretation. There's an OCR property called valid characters that I can use to instruct OCR as to which characters, out of all possible English characters, are acceptable for interpretation. For, by using the special asterisk value with valid characters, I'm specifying that the characters in the search string W, E, L, C, O, and M are the only acceptable characters. However, adding valid characters doesn't seem to help at all. OCR can sometimes get confused if there's a lot of other text or shapes that look like text in the search area. To see if that is the issue, I can set up a search rectangle to limit the search area to the general area where I anticipate welcome will appear. You can use the coordinate copy trick to quickly test this theory, but in this case I'll show how to set up a more robust search rectangle based on an upper left image and a lower right image. Using a more refined search rectangle can also greatly improve the execution speed of OCR. If required, experiment with search rectangles of slightly different sizes. Sometimes small changes in the size of the search rectangle can affect the outcome of the OCR search or read. Hey, that did the trick! This possibly means that the valid character's OCR property wasn't necessary in the first place. So I'll remove it from my OCR search and confirm that it wasn't needed by running the code and checking for a successful search. Here's an example showing a situation where the string shoes appears in more than one place on my UI. I'd like to tap on the second instance, the one that appears in the category section of the UI. OCR cannot distinguish between these two renderings of shoes, but an image search would be able to do so. If I'd still like to be able to work with OCR when searching for shoes, I'll need to set up a search rectangle that excludes the section of the screen where the top instance can sometimes appear. I set up this search rectangle based on the location of the category header in the lower right corner of the screen. Here's an example of some very hard to read text. Note the low contrast between the background and the text, and the dotted line that runs through the text. I've already gone through setting up a bunch of debugging code to help solve this issue, so let's walk through my debugging process. When I use read text to get an idea of what OCR is seeing, the output confirms that this is a difficult string for OCR to interpret. It got most of the characters wrong. The contrast property is an OCR property that I can turn on. It forces OCR to see all pixels in the area as either black or white to maximize contrast and hopefully make the text more understandable for OCR. Unfortunately, it seems that contrast made the situation even worse. Contrast can be tuned. Right now I don't really know what the problem is, so I can use the save image file property to save an image of what OCR sees with contrast turned on. I can see that turning on contrast did nothing to make the dotted line invisible to OCR. This is because the blue dotted line and the gray text are close enough in color that they were grouped together and both turned black. What I need is for the text to be turned one color and the background and dotted line to be turned to the opposite. The default behavior for contrast is to look at the color of the upper left pixel in the search area and set that as what's called the contrast color. 
all pixels within a certain RGB range or within the contrast tolerance around the contrast color are turned to white and all other pixels are turned black. However, I can specify the color that should be used as the contrast color if desired. By using the color at location function to figure out the ballpark RGB values for the background, line, and text, I can know my other options for setting a contrast color. I'm going to set the contrast color to be equal to the color of the gray text. However, the color of the dotted line currently falls within the default contrast tolerance range of 45, which means both the line and the text would be turned to white, which is not what I want. I'll run some code that specifies a more restricted contrast tolerance and see how it goes. OCR still isn't interpreting as expected, and my save image file shows the contrast still isn't quite I'll broaden the contrast tolerance a little bit more, and that seems to be just what I needed. Once I set all on the code that works best for interpreting this text element, I need to clean up any debugging code, including the save image file property. You might remember this example from an earlier video in this training series. Here's a situation where the string filter can appear in more than one section of my UI. However, these instances of filter have different capitalization, which means I can use the case-sensitive OCR property to make sure OCR interacts with the instance of interest. This final example shows two strings that look a lot like known dictionary words, but actually have some special characters or numbers in them. OCR makes some assumptions about these strings based on the dictionary, which means that in this case, OCR misinterpreted the strings as words. By specifying a valid pattern of three lowercase letters followed by two numbers, I was able to help OCR interpret the top string correctly. By expressly indicating with valid characters that dollar sign and all lowercase letters are acceptable, I was able to help OCR interpret the bottom string correctly. DPI, which stands for dots per inch, is an OCR property that can be used both with OCR searches and with read text. It is not commonly used, but it is most often used with mobile sets, the screens of which tend to have a relatively high DPI. The OCR update panel includes a DPI search as part of its diagnostics, which can help you understand not only when DPI will help your OCR search be successful, but also which DPI you should use. If you suspect that setting the DPI property is necessary and otherwise know the DPI of your set screen, you can also incorporate that value into your scripts. The language OCR property is essential if you wish to find or read text that is in any language other than English. Specifying the language property is important not only with languages that use completely different characters from English, such as Japanese or Russian, but also languages that use similar alphabets, such as Spanish or German. I haven't covered all of the different OCR properties in this video, so check out our documentation for more information on refining OCR.